today I'm going to be planting out some lettuce seedlings and these are from seeds that I actually sowed about three weeks ago on a sunny windowsill and they're quick to germinate uh, which is why I like to start them early but there is one slight disadvantage of doing them in this way they tend to make quite spindly plants indoors so I'm also going to look at direct sowing today because they tend to make better plants but the reason I've sown them indoors is simply because I actually want to get some on uh, grown on early so that I can get some lettuces that are actually ready to eat So these are my lettuce seedlings that I've uh, planted and you'll notice that the level of the biodegradable pot is more or less at the same level of the soil. Uh, this is important because I don't want them to stand proud when I'm watering them or too low for that matter because they'll end up too saturated with water. So what I'm intending to do is putting a couple of seeds in between each of these plants uh, because this is successional sowing. So as these plants grow on I'll have some seedlings coming through and that's ideal because these are loose leaf variety lettuces and it means you can pick off single leaves at a time or if you so wish you could harvest the entire lettuce. So in order to plant lettuce seeds you need to only make about a centimetre depth channel for them to go in and a piece of bamboo that's just the right size is ideal, it makes the process that little bit easier. You'll notice the soil is also slightly damp, that helps because if this soil was very loose it actually wouldn't work very well this method so just slightly dampened soil not too wet Let's try again that soil's a little bit dry there and there we go pop that to one side so as i said before this is a mixed leaf variety a loose leaf and i can't really tell what i'm getting out of this packet all i know is that some seeds are white and other seeds are a darker colour so the darker ones ought to come out red as a general rule and I'm not going to be too precious about how many I put in ideally I probably only want about a couple to come through but we'll see because they won't all germinate so just pop a couple in at any one point trying to keep again the spacings relatively even and the problem is, sometimes you lose track and you can't remember which ones you've put them in and you can't see them because they're so small. Yeah, put a few too many there. That's about right. Now, because they're small seeds, they don't require a great covering of soil, so it is literally just a case of popping it over like so. Some of these are a little bit proud, so I can push them down as I go once I sort the soil levels out. Yeah, it's sort of even. You usually find that once you've watered it once, you can work out where it's uneven and add a little bit more soil in if you need to. So this was sown just into a compost that I made myself out of stuff fresh from the compost heap mixed with a bit of old dry compost from the year before so I know it's not going to be too nutritionally rich for my seeds that are going to come through and I am trying to water these carefully because obviously I don't want to knock my spindly seedlings over so something like that should do it quite nicely I don't need to water the seedlings themselves because I actually remember to water them before I put them in because that's a better way around because they certainly don't want watering now because It'll be like having a torrential downpour on them because they're so delicate. And that's pretty much it. And I would expect uh, these to come on within the next couple of weeks. Hopefully within three weeks I might have something to pick off. And these will take a little bit longer. But as I'm beginning to pull these ones out and the leaves are getting to the point where there's few, few left to pick, I'll have some healthy seedlings coming through in between. So these are some seedlings, lettuce seedlings that I put in about three weeks ago and you can see they've, they've actually sown quite closely so I'm going to have to thin these out but I'm going to wait for a few more to come out first but you'll notice what's very important here once you've got any lettuces in, seedlings or seeds make sure you net it because if you don't the next time it's wet the slugs and the snails will feast on your crop This is buckler leaf sorrel and it's in the Rumex genus so it is related to dock but it's not nearly as invasive and it's a great plant because it is a perennial and perennial plants are ideal if you're trying to disturb the soil a little bit less as in the no dig method and so many of our vegetables that we grow tend to be grown as annuals or they indeed are annuals but we take them out at the end of the year 
And the thing I like about this is is that it will always be there throughout the year. Very low maintenance. You don't have to do anything at all really, really with it, and it will keep producing leaves even into the winter if the weather's mild enough. And it will be one of the first things to come back in spring as well. So you just cut the leaves off as you require them, and it will rapidly replace them. So it's quite a vigorous plant, and it's very lemony. In common with all the other sorrels, it has that lovely lemony quality because it's high in vitamin C, and you can see why it's called buckler leaf because it's got these lovely shield shade leaves which make it quite distinctive amongst the sorrels which all tend to have a very um, normal dis undistinct looking leaf so you'll be able to recognize it from all the others and I just happen to think this one has a slightly milder and better taste and it's great for the salad bowl or you can indeed use it much like you use spinach. This is one of the spinach beds that I have in my garden. These are seeds that went in around about three weeks ago and it's one of the first things to germinate in the garden because spinach is very good like that. It will germinate at quite low temperatures. So you can pretty much grow it all year round. This is a variety I've chosen called Matador because allegedly it's less likely to bolt. I find that in hot weather, nearly all spinach bolts. And by that, I mean it goes to flower and then it produces less leaves. You might try sowing it early in the year so that that doesn't happen and also late in the year because you can actually overwinter this plant. One thing that's going on here is I can see that the germination rate is a little bit uneven. So if you look through the netting here, you can see that some at the back are more densely distributed than the ones at the front. It's just possible that I forgot to water that bit at the front at a critical time or my watering was a little bit uneven and that will have meant the seed dried out and it won't germinate. However, that's not really a problem because I can actually just pop some more in and that will help with successional sowing and because more plants coming through is a good idea particularly with something that tends to go to bolt like spinach. Now you will notice it's got netting across this and this isn't really to keep the slugs and snails off although they will have a bit of a nibble of your plants. They're generally not as interested in spinach as they are in lettuce. This is actually to keep blackbirds off because the blackbirds in my garden really seem to like to uh, have a dust bath in these big beds of mine and also search for worms. So it's an unintended consequence of having a wildlife garden is that the birds will take over. And also Pepper, the neighbour's cat, has been known to sit on these beds. And it took me a little while to work out why there were certain shapes of areas which roughly cat shaped that weren't germinating. And I you know, figured it out eventually. So over here, just beyond the cabbage bed, I've got some other leafy crops coming. In this shady corner, I have red auric growing and this is very similar to spinach you can use it in the same way almost in salads you know lightly cooked it's very delicious now i've not grown it before and so i don't know how well it's going to grow in this shady corner but i think it's going to be perfect because it prefers a little bit of shelter from the sun and it tends to uh, grow much taller than spinach so it doesn't want to be contained under an ether net and i suspect that slugs and snails aren't going to particularly bother with this one that's my hope anyway and beneath this, I've got my first coriander seedlings coming through. And I sowed these again at the same time as the spinach and the oryx, so it's been in about three weeks. And it's just beginning to germinate. And the only thing is, when you're dealing with coriander, the seeds are very lightweight. So the best way of actually ensuring relatively successful germination is to sow them onto firmed and watered soil. And then once they're on top, just gently push them into the wettish soil and hopefully then they won't float away because otherwise when you water them they tend to just float away and end up in a random pattern not that that's a problem as long as they get pushed down into the soil eventually and it's really nice to have my own supply of coriander because I make an awful lot of curry and why buy it from the supermarket when you can easily grow it yourself